never smoked again. Okay. It worked, you know, to let him try it. What, did, did he uh, enjoy smoking the cigar or was he trying to show off? He was trying to show, show off, yeah. I think. Okay. <laughs> well, he wanted the experience. Uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Some of it's in there, but some of these things about Carl Hart. Uh huh. Uh, oh, he would uh, take us. He was a, a, a good about. He, oh, I, we worked with him and his and, uh, and Forrest Ewell very often. But sometimes I can remember the first time he took me to the lake fishing. Uh -huh. And you usually caught. Oh, you put the line in, you'd get the bluegill or bluefish or something like that. And there were a lot of bullhead in the lake, but bass was the prize. Well, that time Carl took me fishing with him and, with him and, and Forrest. Well, I hadn't been there very long when all of a sudden there was a big tug on my line. We just had cane poles at that time. And, oh, because they got excited and helped me haul it in. It was a big, beautiful bass. <laughs> and I was pretty proud of myself because they didn't catch anything like that. Oh, okay. And it was my first experience. They uh, probably had it for supper? Oh, I don't remember about that. Oh. It was too much to have for supper. Oh. But uh, then in the winter time, my father, you've heard of Luther Fiskanessa, haven't uh -huh. you? Well, he would cure his own. He okay. would get the dried cod downtown, and then it would be soaked in lye uh -huh. solution. And it got real fluffy and good. And uh, he, when you boiled it up, it just was white, snow white and fluffy. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> uh, he would serve it with drawn butter and mustard. And another thing, Norwegian thing that uh, he got my mother, taught, taught my mother to make, was, oh, well, they called it remagrot. It was a sort of a porridge, I guess. Mm -hmm. And he brought it on top of the stove and, and uh, put big lumps of butter in it. Okay. The rest of it, oh, my mother always had an awful lot of baking on hand. You had to have because, you know, there were people dropping in all the time. And although she never worked, in a sense, she, you could almost say she did. Because when my father would have people come to the house a lot of times to talk about jobs they wanted done. Uh -huh. And she'd come in and offer them refreshments. Okay. Sometimes they wanted something and sometimes they didn't. Uh -huh. And then she fielded the phone calls. You know, people would call and want to talk to them and she set up appointments for them. For masonry work? Or? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, well, he worked on everything. Culverts and and uh, bridges, some bridges, and uh, houses, and churches, and... Did he do any carpentry, too, or was it mostly... No, he would get somebody to do okay. the carpentry, okay. or, and the electrical work. Okay. He, uh, uh, I lose track of what I'm talking about sometimes. Well, you're talking about the, the work that your father did, and... Uh, yeah. And... Well, and then during the Depression, Randy has always thought we were very fortunate because the construction work just fell off during the Great Depression. Yeah. So for a few years, he still had some work, you know, but not like it used to be. And of course, that was during the years when Carl and I would normally have been going to college. Okay. But people, uh, children were coming home from college without jobs. So I took the two-year course of teacher education in Galesville. Okay. And Carl chose to go to Chicago. Okay. So uh, anyway, some uh, a federal official came around and recruited my father to go to Tomahawk to act as a for 
chairman for construction work. Was that the CCC camps? Yeah. Uh -huh. Civilian conservation yeah. work. Yeah. And I'm sure he didn't earn a lot, but he kept us comfortable during the Great Depression. Com era. Comfortable. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and I couldn't imagine my father, along with his duties as supervising the construction work, was he had a whole barracks filled with kids from Milwaukee and she in Chicago, mm -hmm. and he had to supervise them as well as do the work. By kids, you mean teenagers, or? Well, I suppose they were, you know, like 17, 18 year olds, okay. like that. And I couldn't imagine my quiet Norwegian father doing that, but apparently it worked fine. He didn't have any trouble, and they threw him a big party when he left. Uh -huh. And. Uh, he didn't get home too often during those years, but uh, anyway, we were uh, we were lucky that he had something to go to. Then when he came back home, you know, he was able to do some. After Roosevelt was elected, he uh, got back into construction again. Okay. Uh, and all oh, summers we would. There were quite a few summers. Carl must have been along. I can't. But anyway, he worked on the Albert Lee. Uh, no, he, in Albert Lee and Austin on the Hormel plant. And we went there in the summertime. Okay. Well, Carl wasn't there then because he. No, that was another year. I remember it because it was a girl just a little older than I was, and she took me under her wing, and we went all over the towns, and, and I enjoyed it. Then one year, he worked, uh, I think it was International Harvester Plant in Fargo, North Dakota, which was right on the border with Minnesota. Okay. And car, we had a, a Ford Touring car at that time, and Carl drove, so he must have been around... 16 or 17 probably, uh -huh. and we drove across the plains, and we uh, there were no motels or anything then. Okay. I guess there were some cabins here and there, but we just drove up to a farmhouse and introduced ourselves. We stayed overnight and had breakfast there. Oh, that was okay. quite a common practice then. Oh, that's interesting. Because okay. there just were no uh, motels. So uh, generally, people would be courteous and let you spend the oh, night. Sure. And, uh, yeah, they made some extra money that way. Okay. And then another year, that was after Carl went to Chicago. Uh, my mother and I, my father had been working in, in Minneapolis at that time and earning good money. And my the man that was at the head of the whole project, I took a liking to that, and he said, well, you'll have a job as long as you want it and as long as I live. Well, Mr. Lundquist died the next year. Oh. But anyway, we went to uh, Minneapolis and got an apartment, and we were going to, my mother thought we were going to stay there, you know, for that year. Well, you know, she she didn't drive and she wasn't, uh, you know, up to the exploring by streetcars and things like that. So she decided, well, I even registered at, uh, and went for a while to Central High School in Minneapolis. But then she decided that she wanted to go back with her friends and her place. It was a lot better than being cooped up in an apartment. <laughs> So, uh, but she would go up and visit, you know, every once in a while. Uh, you know, it wasn't that hard to go by bus. So she could, uh, oh, let's see, what else? Just make sure. Well, I'd say Scandinavians were the pro uh, prominent uh, nationality, and then Germans. <laughs> and then there was a smattering of French and Scottish and Irish, quite a few Irish, mm -hmm. uh, and a few Dutch families. Were there any blacks at all? Were there no, any, not the a single only, one? The only one we had, a, oh, we called
out of a rag paper, uh, Hyman, a Jewish uh, family. And the boy, Myron, uh, was in my class. And he was a real nice boy. And I can remember we were supposed to tell which what our favorite poem was. Or, and he said, the Lord's Prayer, which is Christian, of course. Yeah.
kinds of wildflowers, and we would have contests to see who could collect the most varieties of wildflowers. There were all kinds of them. Uh, and then there was a bridge going across the river. See, there was a lake that led into a deep channel. Then there was, Randy called it a waterfall, but it was a dam, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, then there was, uh, it went into a sort of a river. And there was a swinging bridge over that, high over the river. Mm -hmm. And when you walked, if you were tall, you were way above the fence of it, you know. Okay. So, and this bridge would swing as you walked across it. It was oh. sort of scary. Sounds like fun. July celebrations and the fireworks and the dance hall mm. and the curling rinks. Okay, I know what that is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then there was an upper table park, which was upper, that was a, a level above. And that was uh, near our church. And I can remember, our minister was a very stiff necked strict Well, anyway, that was lucky, you know, 